This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the um, third lecture on um, management of inventory. And um, we, although in the earlier lectures I dealt with the economic order quantity, uh, where there obviously are calculations involved, this lecture is on just in time, um, which is more of a what you might call a philosophy. Uh, there are no calculations involved, but you are expected to, to understand what just in time is. Uh, and essentially, and what too many people write, is um, that it involves keeping inventory levels to an absolute minimum in a perfect world carrying zero inventory. In the real world, as you'll see, we would carry some inventory but keep it to an absolute minimum. Because we already know that uh, a benefit of having uh, a very low inventory is you're saving on all your uh, holding costs. And of course the money tied up, which is the big holding cost, the more money tied up in inventory, the more interest it's losing us or costing us if we're having to borrow the money. Uh, however, you do need to understand how we achieve it and what the benefits would be. And I'm going to ask two questions, which I'll answer. The first is, why do we have inventory? You know, uh, conventionally, most uh, companies do carry inventories. Why? Now, it may be perfectly obvious, but you know, you have three types of inventory. First of all, raw materials. Uh, if I'm a, a company manufacturing desks, for example, I need wood. And you would expect me to carry an inventory of wood. But why? Um, there's several reasons, I'm not going to go on for hours here, but um, the real reason is to avoid delays in production. Because of various reasons, uh, perhaps the supplier is late delivering. If the supplier's late delivering, and if we've not got any inventory left, then production stops. Uh, a second reason. Um, if there's poor quality material, if we get a delivery and some of the wood is not good, then, of course, We've got to contact the supplier and have it replaced. There'll be a delay. And while we're waiting, again, if we've no inventory, production stops. If we've got inventory, we can carry on with um, you know, the rest of the material. Or a third reason, um, perhaps our workers damage the wood. You know, they regularly um, cut it the wrong size and it has to be thrown away. So we can get another piece of wood, provided we've got inventory. So damage by our workers. So you see what I'm getting at. That's a real reason you would normally expect there to be an inventory of raw materials, to be safe. Um, what about work in progress? Uh, at any stage, you know, desks maybe desks take a week to produce. So at any instant, uh, we've got an inventory of part finished desks. You know, which have only had two days work and still need another three days work on them. Well, that's inevitable. There's not much we can do. The reason we've got inventory is the time it takes to produce. If it takes a week to make a desk, we're bound to have some work in progress. If it takes a month to make a desk, we're going to have more work in progress and so on. And finally, what about finished goods? Why do most businesses 
carry an inventory of finished goods. The main reason, of course, is to make sure they can always supply the customers, because we're never certain what the demand's going to be. If you know you're going to sell exactly 100 units a day, fine, you only need to make 100 units a day, you don't need inventory. But if one day suddenly demand is 200 units, well, if we haven't got 200 in inventory, the danger is we lose the customer, they go elsewhere. Um, to be able to always supply customers. All right, they may not go elsewhere, they may be prepared to wait and come back next week. But you know, if there are plenty of desk suppliers in our town, if we haven't got any in inventory, the dangerous will go next door and we've lost the profit. So there, those are the conventional reasons for holding inventory. But they're all down to inefficiencies. Back to raw materials. To avoid delays in production, late delivery from suppliers. Well, the way around that is why not make sure that the, our contract with us, uh, our, the contract with our suppliers um, insists that if they don't deliver on time, they have they have the big penalty to pay. You know that we need suppliers to deliver on time. Make sure they hold inventory; it's their problem, and that they can deliver to us instantly. If I order a hundred today, they can deliver a hundred today. And if they can deliver instantly whenever I want them, I don't need to carry inventory for that reason. Now, poor quality material. Again, make sure we've got contracts with suppliers where we don't have poor quality material. But if there ever there's poor quality, A, they are charged a penalty to cover us against delays in production, but also they're able to replace the material immediately. Uh, most supermarkets, certainly in the UK, don't keep big inventories. They all have some on the shelf, obviously, to attract the customer. But they don't have big inventories because the big supermarket companies, you know, who've got stores in every town, they have one central place holding inventory and they deliver to the individual stores every one or two hours. And they can, you know, the, the, the machines, the cash machines, are recording every time they sell washing powder or something. So then the computer knows if they're running short of washing powder and there'll be a delivery of exactly what they need. But they're getting deliveries throughout the day and so instead of having big inventories in every individual store, they've just got one central store and they don't need to hold as much inventory. Now, damaged by workers. Well, that's ridiculous. If our workers are damaging, we need to train our workers better or employ better workers. The workers shouldn't be damaging inventory. We shouldn't have that problem. It's costing us money anyway if they're damaging it. And if we can make sure our workers do a good job and don't damage inventory, we're saving money because there's no damage. But also, that's one more reason for having inventory that we no longer need. Now, what about work in progress? I said it's inevitable, you know, if a desk takes a month to make, you're bound to have work in progress. How do we get rid of that? Speed of production. Surely the faster we produce, the less work in progress automatically will be. And it's saving us money as well. Obviously we want our workers to work faster. It's a benefit on its own. And before I summarise all these, what about finished goods? We don't want uh, this situation where we've only got 100 in, in inventory and customers today want 200. How do we deal with that? Uh, one is better planning, obviously. The better we can forecast demand, the better. 
But the real way is, again, fast production. The ideal would be that we could produce so quickly that if a customer comes in and says, we want 100 desks, we then make 100 desks. But if we can make those 100 desks in a very short time, then the customer is likely to be prepared to wait. Uh, Dell computers. I mean, it's different in some countries. They actually have stores, but certainly in the US, they supply, you order over the internet. You order the exact specification you want, so you can choose, you know, what size of hard disk and so on. They don't keep any inventories of finished goods because they can put it together so quickly that you order today and they can post it out to you tomorrow. They don't need to keep inventories of finished computers and they don't want to anyway. Because if you've got big inventories of computers, the danger is, if you haven't sold it uh, within a few months, new models have come out and it, you know, your old model is then not going to be sold. And not everyone can do that, but car companies, for instance, they can't build a car overnight, clearly, but whereas they used to keep big inventories of each. What I mean is, you buy a car, you know, it might be a red car, a blue car, or whatever. So they used to have inventories of red cars and blue cars, different colours. Now they don't. They keep inventories of unpainted cars because if you want a red car, a blue car, well, they can paint it very quickly indeed. They can't have the inventories down to zero, but they can have the much lower inventories. And so that's how just in times achieved. Uh, you have, um, make sure you get fast delivery times from suppliers. Uh, that you get good quality from suppliers. You have contracts um, with suppliers whereby they have to pay a penalty um, if they can't deliver on time or if they do deliver bad quality. Uh, better quality working by employees. Employ our employees shouldn't be damaging um, uh, the raw materials. You know, it, hire good people, train them so that they don't, um, that they do everything right first time, that they don't break anything. Uh, faster working. In two aspects, the faster you can work, the less work in progress there is, but also the faster you can produce, the more that you can produce to meet demand. Or what we call demand pull production. As again, uh, if you can produce very quickly, then instead of producing for it then to sit in inventory and try and sell it, it goes the other way around. Customer comes in, we haven't got any inventory, but they come in, they say what they want. If we can produce it very quickly, we only ever produce what we know we're going to sell. We're not building up inventory. And the customer's happier as well, because we deliver to them exactly what they want. If they want a red desk, we make a red desk. If they want a smaller desk, we make a smaller desk, and so on. Uh, McDonald's is a beautiful example. You know, these fast food restaurants, 
McDonald's doesn't keep inventories of burgers, you know. They may have a few already made because they're very good at forecasting the demand at different times of day. But because they can produce so quickly, you as a customer are prepared to wait. If they said it's going to take an hour, you'd go somewhere else than a few burger. But because order, it can be there in a few minutes. You're prepared to wait. And they're not having to have big inventories of ready-made burgers. Uh, that, of course, because it's food, it would end up having to be thrown away if they didn't sell it. So, I hope that all made sense. Uh, as always, read that page, check it uh, agrees with what you think I said. Uh, but do be prepared to um, get one or two questions, checking that you know what just-in-time is.